The main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, fails to assert any form of control or influence in the choice of the minority leadership in both chambers of the National Assembly when the federal legislature chose its principal officers recently. The development not only left PDP in palpable disarray, but also further exposed the party's gradual and systemic weakening by some of its own, who would not let any opportunity to take their supposed pound of flesh against the party leadership slide. Although not unexpected, the aggrieved group of former five governors of the party appeared visible in the politics of the minority leadership. They were also believed to have compromised the current leadership of PDP under Umar Damagum, who might have given the party away to the G5 governors and let them steal the show. All right, Rufai. PDP. I mean, pure and simple. We had um, Elder Gidi here yesterday, and these were the things we raised. Because, as we speak today, the parliamentary party of the PDP must have a leader that is in tandem with the PDP itself. But we didn't see that. What we saw is the, the asserted dominance of the APC. And the APC dominated, let me use the words of Donald Trump, bigly. As regards not only you know, the majority principal officers, but also the minority principal officers. A couple of newspapers even reported conversations, possible inducements and all of that. You can't substantiate all of that. But the truth has to be said is that the parliament will be greatly controlled by the APC as we speak. And the PDP must learn to live with that. But I fear for the strength of opposition in the 10th National Assembly. Because this is also looking like another rubber stamp. Because if APC can win the battle in putting their own people there as the principal officers representing the majority and the minority, then where do you have a coherent voice? Dr. Bati asked a very salient question from uh, Elder Gidi yesterday, but he couldn't answer the question, sadly. He said, what would you say is the legislative agenda for the PDP in this House of Assembly? There was no answer. Why? Because there's no strength. There's no gusto. There's no level of control. There's no, oh, we are telling our lawmakers to go and do this. In very robust democracies, you see that level of opposition, even despite the fact that the party has lost an election. But the PDP left this to chance. And this did not only start in this. I also saw it with the vote for the leaders of the Senate and of the House of Rep. You saw what happened, that even most of the opposition uh, uh, minority uh, legislators voted for the choice of the APC. So the PDP has lost this, pure and simple. Okay, what the story says is that the PDP is in disarray. Now, why is the PDP in disarray? I think we can trace this back to the um, party primaries, presidential party primaries in May 2022. And that will seem to have provided the grounds for, you know, the narrative at this moment about the PDP being in disarray. Because on that occasion, we witnessed a situation whereby Aminu Tambua, governor of Sokoto State, as he then was, stepped down for Waziri Adamawa Atiku Abubaka. And, you know, that uh, wrong-footed some people, particularly Yesum Wike, governor of uh, River State, as he then was. And we saw what followed. The party began to have issues. Wike and his uh, supporters formed what they called the G5. And the G5 became a force against the mainstream PDP. What has been played out in the emergence of persons at the National Assembly is that that uh, breakout faction of uh, the PDP ended up fighting the party, promised that the party will lose the election, the party lost the election, and now even after the general election, the G5 is still fighting. There have been reports about uh, Yesum Wike and other G5 members meeting with the leadership of the APC and working with the APC to say that the mainstream PDP will not have a voice. 
So, but you look at it, you say it's politics. Political parties are created for people of common interest to come together to pursue the acquisition of power. The PDP would seem to have failed in that regard uh, in this current process because the party clearly is divided. The, uh, you know, the uh, uh, rebel group within the party has asserted itself because it's been said that the minority leader of the Senate that emerged was a candidate who emerged on the basis of the influence of the G5. So all, that, all those things about cash exchanges and all that, we don't have proof. We cannot engage in uh, speculations. But it is very clear that the PDP has a major challenge. How does the PDP survive hereafter? Ed Algidi told us yesterday that the PDP doesn't do well in opposition. Well, there's nothing that says that a particular party must remain in power forever. They have to learn how to be in the opposition. They have to learn old habits that do not place the PDP within the matrix of the uh, power game. And then what would the PDP do if it is established truly, as alleged, as reported, that the G5 is working against the interests of the party? Is there a provision for addressing anti-party activities? These are the issues, in my view. Yes, so, um, critical questions asked there. And just very quickly, because we're out of time, is um, the question around the, this question around the systemic and gradual weakening of the structures of the PDP and this emergence and seeming um, power em empowering of the G5 governors and what actions will be taken to salvage uh, the PDP as a strong opposition party. And then the role the other <laughs> opposition parties, the small opposition parties would play, the Labour Party, for instance, the NNPP in the House and other parties um, like that, because they are in the middle and they would balance that act which side would they follow and what kind of, you know, what persuasions? Do they have party affiliation, strong party um, um, structures to sustain them in the House? These are some of the questions, hopefully, that our guests in the course of the show will respond to as well. Yeah.